Well, hello everybody. This is Kyle Webster from Adobe, and I just wanted to make a quick informal video showing off how the perspective grid works in Adobe Photoshop Sketch for the iPad, because I don't think enough people have taken advantage of this feature, and I think people need to know about it. So let's take a look. Up here at the top of my screen, near the top right here, I have a gear-shaped icon. If I click on that, I have the option to add grids. So I'm going to click Add, and it gives me the option for a graph or perspective. So if I choose perspective, you'll see that it automatically puts a little perspective grid here on my canvas. And I can change the grid density down here at the bottom. I like to have it more dense. All right, so that means I'm showing more lines. And if I pinch and zoom, I can change where the vanishing points are, how far away they are from the edges of my canvas. Okay, so I'll, I'll put them rather close. And I can move my horizon line just by taking my finger and tapping and pulling upwards or downwards, like this. So it's pretty neat. And so I'll set up my grid just like this. And we'll do some drawing. I'll show you how it works. So I'm going to say done. I've already got a, a brush selected. And let's say I want to draw um, a few straight lines that conform to this grid. All I have to do is come up to the shape tool here and you'll see where it says shapes. I have lines and basic shapes. And on the far left here under lines and basic shapes, what this actually is is a ruler. And the ruler is great. It snaps to a vanishing point. And then whichever way I move it, up, down, and left and right, it's always going to keep itself lined up with that vanishing point, okay? And so I can draw a line along the edge of the ruler. It will guarantee that I'm going to make a straight line right there. And then I can make another one down here. So you can draw the top of the ruler or the bottom of the ruler. doesn't matter. I can slide it up like this and make another line. And now let's say I want to draw something on the right side. So I just tap this little cube here, and it shows me these, these faces of the cube. And I'll just do the red highlighted cube on the right, like so. And you'll notice now my ruler snaps to the right vanishing point. It's pretty cool. So now I can draw some lines back to here. And remember, you can use the top or the bottom of the ruler, which is convenient. All right, there we go. Now if I want to draw lines that are vertical, I just tap the cube one more time, click on the top cube, which is now aligning itself to the top vanishing point, which is way out of sight, but this is true three-point perspective. We can now connect these like this, and in just a few seconds, we have a cube that we've drawn. And let's say now, you know, I, I don't want to go to the trouble of actually drawing these lines out to make these rectangular shapes. Well, no problem. I can skip ahead and just use the rectangle. Here we go. And when I use this rectangle, I have the same option. So let's say I want to put a door on this building. I click on the cube, use the top vanishing point. Excuse me, the uh, left vanishing point. There we go. And I can scale it by pulling left and right. This is going to transform it either vertically or horizontally, it's going to distort it, right? So let's say I want to make it a little, a little taller than it is wide. And to size it down, I just pinch with my fingers and pull down like this. And all the while, it keeps it locked to perspective the way I want it. Put my door down here. And instead of actually drawing around the shape, which you can do if you want to just do a, a part of it, for example, I can do this. I can just draw part of the door, right? But another option is I can hold the stylus down in the middle of the shape, just tap and hold, and it will fill the whole thing on the edges. It will give it a stroke all the way around that shape. So I'll do that again out here so you can see it. Make this a little larger. Here's my shape. And I want to just draw a line all the way around it. Just tap and hold. And there you go. Tap the cube. Tap the right side. Now I'm locked to that right vanishing point. 
So maybe I want to put a window up here. Just scale that down. Put it wherever I like. Tap and hold. And there's my window. Now this works with any brush. So if I'm using a different brush, like a pencil or anything like that, it's going to do the stroke with that pencil that you have selected. And when you draw along the edge, you get the same effect as well. And we have other shapes that work. You got triangles. So maybe I want to make a roof for this building. No problem. I'll just do this. Tap and hold. Okay. And then I can do the ruler again, make the top of the roof. So you get the idea. This is how it works. It's extremely powerful. Um, it's a lot of fun. And you can try this with the different shapes we have here as well, the other polygons that are available. And you can even do it with French curves, which is really neat. So for example, I can put a curve here and I can drag that around and it will conform to these lines. So if you have curves that you need to draw in perspective, um, this makes it really, really simple. And it's, it's just a really powerful thing. So I can tap and hold. I can draw along the edge. Okay. And you can see exactly how that works. So that's a perspective grid. That's a, a basic overview of how that works. And give it a try and play around with it. And I know you're going to have a lot of fun. I do think this is a feature that a lot of people might not be aware of. And it's one that you should take advantage of. You can freehand draw on it. You do not have to lock anything in. If I don't have any rulers turned on, you'll see I can just make any lines I wish. And um, that gives you the freedom to do both at the same time. All right, so enjoy that feature. If you have any questions, just reach out to me on Twitter. And thanks for watching.